I've experienced what life is like at the top of the mountain, but I've also been in the valley of darkness. And if you were to deconstruct the word passion, the root is suffering. To get up early, you've got to destroy your old neural patterns and emotional signatures of getting up later. Nothing is more expensive than losing your joy and your peace of mind. Need motivation? Watch the top 10 with Believe Nation. Top 10, top I got a top 10. 10. Top 10. Got my motivation high for my top 10. Top 10. Gotta learn from the wise women and men. It's Evan Carmichael and I make these videos because you are probably the most ambitious person in your circle, but you know you're capable of more. And you get that push by surrounding yourself with the best. So today let's learn from one of the best, Robin Sharma, and my take on his top 10 rules for success. Enjoy. Okay, let's kick it off with rule number one, work on your character. We live in a world that suggests the doorway to su success is, swings outward. If you build the business, if you get the jet, if you get the money, if you get the cars, if you get the beautiful spouse, then you're gonna be happy. What I believe, and there's a model in the 5AM Club that I think is a very disruptive model, but it's a transformational model. And it's called the Four Interior Empires. And it's not just mindset, it's mindset, heart set, health set, and soul set. And we can talk about it if you like. But I worked on those Four Interior Empires when I was a very unhappy litigation lawyer. Like, I'd made money, I was successful, I had two law degrees, and yet I'd wake up every morning, Tom, and I'd go into the bathroom mirror and I'd look at myself and I was a completely empty person. And nothing is more expensive than losing your joy and your peace of mind. And so what I did was I started working on myself. You know, I worked on my mindset and I read all the books and I went to the courses, but that's only your psychology. And I think that's one of the missing links in our field, which is everyone's talking about mindset. But mindset is just your belief system. It's just your psychology. It's, it's very important, but that's 25% of the personal mastery equation. I believe the second piece is your heart set, and I worked on that. Purifying your heart, that's your emotionality, not just your psychology. You're never gonna make history dominate your domain and handcraft a world-class life if you've got a great psychology, but you're carrying the pain and sadness, disappointment and trauma of the past. So I worked on my heart set, but that's only the second interior empire. The third interior empire, your health set. Don't die. If you want to change the world, like dead people don't change the world. So health set, biohacking. There's a whole chapter on recovery and the essentialness of sleep. So really getting your health set right, but there's a fourth interior empire that I worked on that allowed me to go out in the world and, and pursue my, my magic. And it's a little dangerous for me to share because I know how many business people you know, follow you and how many entrepreneurs, but I'm gonna share it because it's my truth. So it's not just mindset and it's not just heart set and it's not just health set, it's soul set. And soul set has nothing to do with religion. Soul set is about working on your character. So you reaccess your nobility and your bravery and your authenticity and your decency and you find a cause that's larger than your life. So when you go out in the world every single morning, people might ridicule you because every genius is ridiculed before they're revered. People might throw stones at you, but you use them to build monuments of mastery. People might not understand you because any disruptor is gonna be misunderstood. And even if you're an army of one, a Galileo or a Steve Jobs or a Phil Knight, you continue at all costs. So those four interior empires that I go into detail in, in the book give you a fiery inner core of warriorship and leadership that allow you to go out in the world and do amazing things. But it all starts with who you are because you'll never rise any higher than what's going on within you. Rule number two, learn from suffering. I used to be a litigation lawyer. So mm -hmm. I, I come from very humble beginnings. I was blessed with um, incredible parents, but I sure didn't grow up with a silver spoon in my mouth. 
And, you know, I, Lewis, I've, I've experienced what life is like at the top of the mountain, but I've also been in the valley of darkness. And if you were to deconstruct the word passion, the root is suffering. Really? And suffering makes great leaders. Suffering makes the Mandela's. Suffering makes the Oprah's. Um, and I think a great life richly lived has lots of the good as well as the challenge. Rule number three, stop making excuses. In your career, have you noticed that when you've taken that path towards growth, you're like, oh my goodness, look at all I can accomplish now? Yeah, absolutely. I, I think a bad day for the ego is a great day for the soul. And, you know, you were talking about people who say, well, maybe, you know, maybe I don't want to get up at 5 a.m. Yeah. It's not for me. And here's why I can't do it. And one thing I've realized is, we, we become victims when we recite our excuses and we recite them so many times, we actually believe they are true. And I think you can cling to your excuses or you can go out there and have an impact and live a fulfilling life and be highly creative and, and enjoy the magic life, but you, you don't get to do both. Rule number four, journal. Journaling is profound. Do you journal? I have journaled to say that I do journal would be a lie. You're going to love journaling. Like I, I do it almost every day. I, I, had, um, I had a show this morning, and then I had to set my intentions for you and all your global followers or, or viewers. And so I went back to my hotel room. I took a cold shower. <laughs> you know, I've been fasting a lot, so we can get into fasting because I fasted as I wrote the nice. Five Am Club, sure. and that helped massively. And then I pulled out my journal and I sat on my terrace and I literally started writing about my intentions for impact theory. And so how do you, how do you move through pain? You journal. Um, if you're going through heartbreak, I mean, we've all experienced heartbreak. What we do is often we repress it because we're not given the tools to process through it. You, you lose a business, people repress it. Someone has a divorce or an illness. Oh, mindset, reframe it, psychology. You're swallowing pain, you're swallowing sadness, you're swallowing anger, we're built to feel, right? So writing in a journal, just getting it out. There's actually something in the 5M Club called the journaling deconstruction because it's not just processing through pain, but to answer your question, that trauma of heart set, you write in a journal, you get it out of your system, guess what? You don't bring passive aggressive into the workplace. You don't bring sadness or low vibe into the workplace. You, you're, you're full of your true self in terms of your heart set, which is gratitude, love, appreciation. You know what that does for a business, you know what that does for a human life. So if you're going through a painful time, write that out. Um, almost every day I write gratitude, but I love great restaurants. And so I'll take the business card, and the next morning I pull out my little glue stick, and I glue the business card into my journal, and I relive the experience. Oh, I had dinner with so-and-so. Here's what I learned. I deconstruct it. With better awareness, we'll make better choices. Better daily choices, better daily results. Imagine journaling like this every single day. You're gonna have such acute awareness about when you're at your best, what the great ones do, how to live a life, what you wanna stand for, what your core values are. You walk out in the world and you're just radiating possibility in a world where people are addicted to distraction and numbed out. Also, if you want to have more self-belief and more self-confidence, I have designed a free training program just for you where every day for the next 254 days, I'll send you an email with an unlisted video to help you boost your confidence. The science says it can take up to 254 days of consecutive action to build a habit. And so I want you to build the habit of self-belief and self-confidence. It's 100% free. The link to join is in the description below. One of the real reasons we don't do the things that frighten us is because we are afraid of being judged. And so to become fearless, why not find some time every day to practice becoming fearless? Stop resisting, I encourage you, stop resisting the natural flow of epic performance. Stop resisting the natural seasons of life. Rule number five, release the trauma. Why don't they teach us the four interior empires. Why don't they teach us? You, you, you said something very powerful. 
Why don't they teach us how to work through wounds? You don't get invited to a birthday party in fifth grade. There is a wound there. You lose a love when you're 16. Mm. There is a wound there. You start a business when you're 22. There is trauma there. And I think that is in many ways the missing link in leadership and personal mastery. And that's really, you know, I'm passionate about the 5 a.m. club because I get into that in, in the book. And I worked four years on the book, but it's really 22 years of my, my learnings and teaching in the book. And that is a missing link because everyone's talking about psychology and people are talking about habits and I'll answer your question, of course. Mm -hmm. But what about dealing with trauma? You know, Carl Jung said, we all have this shadow side. I mean, we all have this well of repressed pain. And anyone who's listening who goes, well, that's not me. It's subconscious. So a lot of, unless you've done the work, you don't even know about it. But it's that pain and self-loathing and self-hatred. In the 5M Club, I say, you know, we have a magic inside of us. The saints call it the light or God or nature or a luminosity. And what happens is when you do the work to release your toxic beliefs and move through your pain, and, and how do you do it? You just feel it. And as you feel through all the toxicity and the hurt and the wounding and the disappointment that's called a human journey, what is left as you release it, you access your light. You access your primal genius. You access creativity. You're productive because you don't have all this emotional baggage you're carrying through the day. You, you know, I believe that the real art of, the, the real key to success is joy and inner peace. Like that's mm -hmm. why all the, a lot of the billionaires, they have all the things and they're not happy. You, our nature is joy, peace, bliss, love. And when you release that trauma, it just shows up because that's who we truly are. Rule number six, invest in your health. So mindset without a heart set is an empty victory, but then there's two more emotional uh, interior empires. The four interior empires, mindset plus heart set plus health set, right? Vitality. Like I said, the hunters on the savannas understood, they didn't understand, but the way the brain developed was literally, if you move, your natural wiring in your brain and physiology kicks into gear. You actually, BDNF promotes neurogenesis. You create more brain cells. Dopamine gets released, norepinephrine, serotonin. You feel happier. You feel less stress. BDNF repairs damaged brain cells. Your processing heightens. You actually dial in your focus. Unbelievable the benefits of exercise. But it's not, and here's another key idea on the third interior empire, health set. Vitality is the DNA of legendary. You cannot put a price tag on getting into the greatest fitness of your life. And then some of you, and I'm going to work on you with great love and respect, are going to say, but if I hire a massage therapist, and if I get a physical trainer, and if I get into acupuncture, and if I biohack, and if I get my genome tested to figure out my telomere so I know my real age, if I do all the things that James and Greg are going to talk about, it's going to cost me a lot of money. How many people hear that or think that right now? Be honest. Fantastic. Here's, here's a little insight, just because I love you. I might not know you, but I feel love for you. I'm here to serve you. I've got your back. Getting into world-class fitness will cost you a lot of money. Death will cost you more. Rule number seven, do difficult things. The thing that you talked about in the book that, that really hit me is this notion of being braver, of finding ways to get braver. And I don't know, it was one of those where you're kind of like trying to guess what the person is going to say, and I was so struck by that one. Um, how do we practice getting braver? What does it mean to be braver? And then how does that end up being useful for us? What, what terrifies you most go directly there. Because discomfort is simply growth in wolf's clothing. Um, the, yeah, I mean, the last chapter is, 
I don't want to give too much away, but it's it's um, an experience I live. You know, it's uh, it's Nelson Mandela's prison cell. Mm. Have you been to Robben Island? I haven't, but I am beyond obsessed with Nelson Mandela, so I know the story okay. very well. You know, I I I'd encourage you to go mm. because standing in that in that cell, feeling the sensations, will transform you at a soul level as well as hard set level. So how do we become more brave? Well, I went over to um, Nelson Mandela's prison cell and I stood there and I was shocked. He didn't even have a bed and he was in there for 18 years. Then I went over to the limestone quarry and I saw where Nelson Mandela spent 10 years chipping away at stone to break his spirit because they threw the stones away. And then I saw the showers where this elderly statesman would shower while the young guards would laugh at him. And then in the book, I talk about a true fact where he was asked on Robben Island to dig a grave and he, he, he got in the grave thinking he was going to die and the prison guards urinated on him. And my point is simply this, when Nelson Mandela was released from prison after 27 years of total incarceration, the, he invited the prosecutor who was seeking the death penalty to dinner and he invited the prison guard who kept him in prison for 18 years on Robben Island to his inauguration as president of South Africa. And he was asked, why would you do that? And he said, because if I didn't, I'd still be in prison. And my point is to lead and to become a great hero or an everyday hero. The doorway is through embracing our suffering and doing difficult things. I think pleasure has been promoted too much in our society. Like no great titan of industry, no legendary cellist, no great athlete. You know, the great ones all understand that suffering is the price of greatness. So how do we become braver? You, you, you do the difficult things that you don't feel like doing, but you know have the payoff. Rule number eight, get up early. There is a reason many of the great women and men of the world, the great history makers, the great poets, the great philosophers, the great movement makers rose before the sun. There is a magic in the air at 5 a.m. And that's why the 5 a.m. club is so transformational because it's the time of greatest quietude. And I believe tranquility is the new luxury on our planet. It is the, a time of intimate creativity because you've just been rested. Your brain is fresh. There's, there's latest, uh, there's, there's very recent cutting edge science coming out now. When you sleep, your brain actually has a mechanism to wash itself. When you wake up in the morning, your willpower is strongest. When you wake up in the morning, you've got a full well of mental focus. And we know that focus in our world is even more valuable than intelligence. And I could go on and on on the benefits. I mean, you get up at 5 a.m., you've got the world to yourself. There's no crowds. You can think, you can plan, you can care for yourself in a world where so many people are so depleted. And so the five, it, the 5 a.m. club really is a game changer. And then it's not just get up at 5 a.m. and, you know, scratch your stomach or stare up at the ceiling. It's or look at the, your phone. Or look at, especially <laughs> not. I believe you can play with your phone or change the world. You don't get to do both. Yeah. And so uh, it, the 5 a.m. club method is based on the 2020 formula. I'm happy to get into it. But that is yeah, the revolution. Yeah, tell us what it is. That's the revolutionizer. And, and it started from my experience with working with many billionaires. I, I, I've coached many of the most successful financiers and uh, tight of industry for, for over two decades. And one of the things I would run them through is the way you begin your day sets up the way you live your day. And so the 2020-20 formula that the book is based upon is pretty simple. I, I go into great detail in the book, but essentially it's from 5 to 5.20, the first pocket is move. And I, I'm a fanatic about neuroscience and why do you get up and move? Because you're going to release serotonin, which is going to make you feel better. You're going to release dopamine, which is the pleasure and inspirational neurotransmitter. You're going to release norepinephrine, which will boost your focus. You'll promote neurogenesis. Marie, you can actually grow new brain cells. Oh, you're going to increase yeah, you your metabolic rate. So the way you begin, the way you feel when you first wake up is not the way you're going to feel at 520. Second pocket of the 2020-20 formula, 20 minutes from 520 to 540, that's on reflection. So a lot of us are busy, but what's the point of being busy if you're doing the wrong things? 
The, the billionaires, the great creatives, the people of great impact, the people who live beautiful lives are very intentional. Mm -hmm. They're very deliberate. They're very conscious. So for 20 minutes, you write in a journal. You can visualize. You can pray. You can meditate. You can simply contemplate how you're going to live your day, who, what you want to stand for during the day, for example. And then the final pocket of the 2020 formula is all about grow. And that's where you, you, you just read from a biography or a business book or a philosophy book or a or watch a Marie TV. Well, especially watch a Marie <laughs> TV. That's, yeah, of course. That's the game changer, isn't it? And so that's 20 minutes of growing yeah. because I think we're most alive when we are growing. Yes. And, um, I believe the leader who learns the most wins. So that's in in a nutshell, the 2020 20 formula. Rule number nine, persevere. So the research, as I mentioned, at University College of London says it takes 66 days for any human being to wire in a, in a, in a habit. And we all have a gift called neuroplasticity, so we all can do it. And then the model I, I, I share in the book is called the Habit Installation Protocol, and basically it's 22 days called installation, uh, excuse me, called destruction. To, to get up early, you've got to destroy your old neural patterns and emotional signatures of getting up later. Mm -hmm. That doesn't happen in an instant. All change is hard at first, messy in the middle, gorgeous at the end. So that first destruction phase is 22 days. There's nothing wrong. Society says it's hard, so it's bad. I'm suggesting it's hard, so it's good. That's what real change is. As you, with that awareness, you can stay with it and get into the second phase, which is installation. And that's like a house renovation, which is messy. And that's why change is messy in the middle. Your old pathways and ways of being are falling apart. But you know this because I, I sense you have a very deep grounding. In that middle part, you have to, in some ways, let go of who you were. Mm -hmm. It's called a dark night of the soul. So for 22 days, it's, it's messy in the middle because you're letting go of who you were. That's not easy, and that's why habit installation, you need to have some bravery. But that's only 22 days. Stay with it because then you get to the third phase, which is implementation. So destruction, integration, implementation. Well, now we're on the short roads, and the neuroplasticity has kicked in. And the researchers call it automaticity. You will, every human being can get to a place 66 days later approximately where it actually gets easier to get up at 5 a.m. than to stay into bed. And the point is, it's called automaticity. And that's, it. you know, we all have that ability. We just need to stay with that three-stage process for 66 days. And rule number 10, the last one before a very special bonus clip, is feel deeply. You see, most people in the room, no, that's not... Everyone in the room has been traumatized. No one talks about this. Oh, this is a business event. You're talking about trauma? Everyone in this room has experienced trauma at some level or another, to varying degrees. Sometimes it wasn't being invited to someone's party, trauma, <laughs> right? Sometimes it was sexual abuse, trauma. And so what happens is, this is so important, I could spend the whole day on this, but the human tendency and the cultural seduction is don't feel the pain of the trauma. Everyone know what I'm talking about or am I out on the jagged edges? Don't feel the trauma. Don't feel the disappointment. You got heartbroken. Don't go into it. Only seek pleasure. Only be happy, happy, happy. Be, put on the happy face. Watch the happy TV shows. Seek pleasure. And... What we do is we actually flee from feeling because of the trauma. And we start to live in our heads and we numb out our body and we don't feel. But to be human is to feel. To be a great leader is to feel. If you look at the greatest empire builders economically, Zuckerberg, Musk, Steve Jobs, great example. He fell deeply. You know, he lived in a pretty simple house even when he was a multi-billionaire. Simple house. He, wasn't a, he was only about a few things. He was about family. He was about, you know what he said? I love this because I'm a purist. I built my, build my life around just a few things. He said, my favorite things in life, books and sushi. Isn't that beautiful? And he, he was an artist. He was an artist. And so 
mindset without heart set. So we, we experience trauma and then we block it out, and repress it, and then we lose our emotional game, which is mission critical to world class. You've got to love your clients. You've got to love the beauty of creating gorgeous products. You've got to want to serve. It doesn't happen in the head. Oh, you know, you've, service to your clients, to the marketplace, happens in your heart. You, the desire to lead a world-class life happens emotionally. And that's how you battle-proof yourself against volatility. It's not an intellectual game, it's a visceral game. It's in your DNA. Now I've got a special bonus clip that I think you're gonna enjoy, but before that, it's time for the question of the day. I wanna know what was your single biggest takeaway from this video and your plan of action for the next week. When you watch something and get motivated and just get inspired, you have a 35% chance of actually following through. But when you get motivated and then you actually create an action plan for what you're gonna do, you increase it from 35% to 91% chance of you actually following through. And when you share your plan publicly, Publicly, that jumps to 95% chance of following through. So I want that for you. I want to know your single biggest takeaway from this video and your plan of action for the next week. Put it down in the comments below so I can celebrate you. When I grew, when I, my, my father is in his 80s. Uh, he's been a, an icon of uh, possibility in my life. And he retired recently after 54 years as a family physician. And he said, Robin, I said, Dad, why did you stay in the game so long? And he said, because my patients needed me. He's a man of service. And he used to share a, a, a quote with me from Rabindranath Tagore. And it was, Robin, when you were born, you cried while the world rejoiced. He said, son, live your life in such a way that when you die, the world cries while you rejoice. Now, I, I've seen your work and you're doing an amazing job. And some of your posts are, you know, don't worry so much about likes. And I think you're right. I think we're in a, in a lost world in many ways. Um, and I don't think it's about likes. And I don't think it's about yachts. And I don't think it's about jets. And are those things wrong? Absolutely not. We're, we're sensual human beings having a journey. But I think there's a different game that the true legends and titans play. And it's about jo enjoying the journey but it's really about making an impact on humanity. And there's not one of your listeners who can't do that, whether it's if you work in a coffee shop or you're a teacher or you're a street sweeper. We all have a calling on our lives to elevate those around us. And so service has been very big to me. My life changed um, on two occasions. Number one, I, I sat in Mother Teresa's bedroom in Calcutta, now, now called Kolkata. And it was interesting to me, she had nothing but a bed and a table. Because she would reach a level of maturity where her bliss and joy didn't come from material things. It came from love and service. Two years ago, I, st I stood in Nelson Mandela's prison cell. And my life changed standing there because he was in there for 18 years. I stood in the limestone quarry where he chipped away at limestone that they didn't even use to degrade him because he had no purpose. I stood in the showers where he would shower naked as an elderly statesman while the young guards laughed at him, again to torture him. In, in the 5M Club, I, I, I write a true story where he was asked on Robben Island to dig a grave. And Jay, they said, get in the grave. And he thought, of course, he was going to die. And they urinated on him. And yet when he was freed from Robben Island, and then he went to Drakenstein Prison in Parl, South Africa, when he was released, he actually um, found the prosecutor who fought for the death penalty and took him to dinner. And he actually went to the jailer who kept him in prison for 18 years on Robben Island over a total of 27 years of confinement. And he seated him near the front at his inauguration as president of South Africa. And he was asked why 
did you do that? And he said, because if I didn't, I would still be in prison. And so why do I mention Nelson Mandela and Mother Teresa and Martin Luther King Jr.? It's because the 5 a.m. club and all these rituals, yes, be creative, it'll help you productivity, it'll make you money in that. But really, in many ways, this book is a manifesto about our responsibility to materialize who we are on the inside. You know, and there's, no, I would take a bullet, Martin Luther King Jr. said, if you have not found something you die for, you're not fit to live. I would take a bullet for the fact that every single person on the planet, if they run these rituals and they do the work and they stay in the game, not only when it's easy, but when it's hard, they're gonna live gorgeous lives in their own original way. So why wait for these heroes to show up? We're, we're, oh, I wish there were more leaders and heroes. When we all have it in us, to be one of those heroes. But most of us aren't doing the right things to manifest our glory. If you want another amazing video highlighting excellence in the Indian community, check it out right there next to me. I think you'll enjoy it. Continue to believe and I'll see you there.